Good afternoon, everyone. It's Steve Cal5JUF. Hope everyone's having a good day out there. I'm doing pretty good. Got a little touch of this sinus infection going around, but otherwise I'm making it okay. I got the old meds and everything. So what I did, uh, I had some success with getting uh, Ham Radio Deluxe Digital Master 780. I had some success getting it to actually interact with the FT991A. Uh, I got the settings, I went through and did some testing, and I actually got Digital Master to interact with the uh, FT991A. So I thought if maybe if some of you guys are kind of going down that same road I am, I uh, wanted to share with you what I discovered, uh, and it, it actually works. So I was going to document it. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, in the very beginning I'm going to go to device manager when you downloaded some of the drivers from uh, um, from uh, Yesu you downloaded the drivers and you probably noticed that they populated your device manager with two ports one is a standard port and one is a com port now the difference is the standard port is what you use to interact with your radio from HRD. It's a much more high speed, probably a more data intense uh, COM port uh, So because you have a lot of information going back. The additional COM port that comes with it is uh, called a standard COM port. Now what this port does is it is used for toggling the DTR uh, and the RTS uh, switches which you would normally see for example like on a CAT interface Phase cable. Those are pins, they call them, and those pins interact with the radio as far as keying and so forth. That's something I learned, so at least I'm still learning it. So you, this, this is important, so go to your device manager and you should have both of these available because what I'm going to do today is I'm going to, I'm going to use COM port number four. All right, we'll close that down. Now, what you have to do on your radio is you have to go in and you may have to adjust these 14 settings, and these settings are under the menu setup. So most of you probably uh, have seen some of my videos where I talk about going into the menu setup and going in and setting these specific settings and so forth. So uh, like I said, just go back and look at some of my other videos if you have any questions on how to get there. And these are all, this is the steps here, and I'll put all this in the in the uh, body of the, uh, the video. So these are the settings and there's actually 14 of them. Uh, these are the actual menus. This is the description. This is the default, the way they come, and this is what we're going to change them to. So if anything goes wrong, you can always go back to the default. So not a bad plan. All right, I'm going to go ahead and launch HRD. So let me go to my desktop here. And what I'll do here is I will go ahead and hit now what will happen is you're going to see HRD is going to come up and it's going to use COM port number three. See right there, COM port number three, which is the enhanced port. So when I click OK, it's going to go ahead and turn on the radio. Now I could go in here and set uh, uh, DM, Digital Master, and so forth, but uh, I, those are some check boxes. I'm going to go ahead and launch DigiMaster. And I'm going to go through the settings that I changed. So the first thing you want to do is after you work, after you set up all your settings on the 991A, you'll want to go into to, uh, 780 and you'll want to go to program options right here. Now, when you go into program options, the first tab that you're going to want to look at is called modes and IDs. So on modes and IDs, we're going to select CW, and this is the area that we're going to focus on right here. So the first thing we want to do is make sure enabled serial COM port keying. Now that other standard COM port on my computer is number four, and that's what I'm going to use, number four. Use the drop down if you need to change it. And we want to select DTR. That's for CW. What you see here is how it needs to be for this function to work. RTTY, a little bit, a uh, little bit different, but generally about the same. The settings we need to have here is we want to make sure frequency shift keying is, is enabled. We are using COM4, and we are using RTS. And the last thing is we've got to make sure this Niesu SU17 box is checked. Now the next thing we'll do is we will go to the tab for uh, this, the sound card. This is pretty straightforward. You've got a Kodak already loaded that came with those drivers. You just want to make sure that your microphone is on the uh, input 
and your output will be the speaker. So, and of course, you'll you'll have you'll see that they're uh, they they're put in the proper drop down. So all you have to do is just make sure that the two USB codec is working, and that's the only uh, change on that page. Uh, the last page will be PTT. And the last, what we want to do here is just make sure that we are uh, uh, have this box checked that uh, D DM780 uh, must be connected to HRD, and this is how we're actually going to uh, do do the uh, push to talk and so forth. And that's what we're going to do right here. So that's the only setting you need to pay attention to there. So we've already launched the radio, and we're in Digital Masters. So those are the settings that you'll need to do. Uh, what I'm going to show you next is uh, I'm going to show you uh, with everything. What I did is I went into modes and I checked RTTY45 frequency shift keying, and you notice it is right. It is right here, and also I click CW, and it's in here. So this is quickly available. Now there's a lot you can do with DM80. There's macros and things that you can build. These are some of the default macros, but I haven't gotten into any of that yet. So I just kind of this is more or less to show you how to make it work, and then I'll just keep exploring how to do things. So real simple, um, just to demonstrate this, I'm going to demonstrate one of the macros here, and I'm going to click on Call CQ CQ, and you'll see it populate down here, and you'll also hear the radio. There it is. So what you saw down here, this was actually transferring a macro. And one of the things that I learned was the macro actually pulls uh, a lot of that information. Uh, let's see, there's, there's, uh, and you can also actually, if you want to launch, for example, if you want to launch logbook, it, it will, this tab, this area will now be available too. So you can actually go in there and, uh, do a logbook entry if you want to. And I've got part of my logbook working with QRZ. And I want it down. There we go. So now I've got, uh, if you want to click here, this will put the time in. And you can enter the call sign, the name, QTH, and so forth, and the frequency, uh, and signal reports, and so forth. And then you can add it to the queue. So you can actually enter logbook entries right here. So that that's really pretty cool, too. So uh, the other thing was uh, there are some ways you can go in and configure some of these buttons and so forth. Uh, I don't know if all of these are actually correct. It seems to work. Uh, uh, so, but again, this is just mainly to show you how to get it talking to the 991A. So, uh, again, that's uh, that's how it works. I'm going to go ahead and do a second part of the video to actually show you what the radio looks like with the interface and so forth, which will be pretty cool. But again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, I can email you this. Uh, I made up my own little procedure. Uh, I'm real big about procedures. I like to write them very carefully. And these are just strictly from me, so they're not from any company or anything. These are just things that I do because I do this at work all the time. I go through, and this shows you here some of the different, uh, you know, where these DTR and RTS pins and so forth are. This is just the one for our ready. And it kind of gives me a way of, of understanding it and so forth. There's some actually some settings right there where you can go in and do some things with your Kodaks. You can custom name them and so forth. But uh, anyway, that'll... I'll, I'll close up this part of the video, and the next part will be in front of the radio, and we'll give you a live demonstration of what it looks like. All right, from KF5, JUF will be in front of the radio here in a second. Thanks. All right, folks, we're back in front of the radio here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate um, the actual coding. So what I'll do first is I'll go ahead, I'm going to go back to uh, DM780. So what's going to happen is, as you can see here, uh, I've got... Uh, control of the radio I can go in and change my frequencies and so forth and I'm going to go back to the QRP running 5 watts down here and we'll go ahead and start so what we'll do first is I'm going to go back to DM780 and you're going to actually get to see the radio go into transmit so uh, this is pretty cool so let's uh, send a quick CQ code and see what we got going on 
Alright, that's the interaction there. We'll take one quick picture real quick and then we'll wrap this video up. Alright, one thing I was saying I want to show you. One of the things we weren't sure if we were actually transmitting, but uh, we are. And if you watch the power meter, you'll kind of see how the interaction goes. I'm going to bump up the power just a hair so you can kind of see uh, you know, how it will interact with uh, CW. Because this is kind of interesting because it's, it's, it's pulses. Alright, good deal. Well, that's the video again. This this video is just to show you how to get it communicating. I've got a long way to go. I've got a whole lot to learn. But I thought if you're in this situation where you are trying to use DM780 with an FT991A, uh, this this will get you this will get it working. At least you'll get the keying right and, and using the RTS and DTR and that additional COM for it, which is something I really struggled with. But I finally we watched a whole lot of videos and put it all together and uh, anyway this is what I got so I thought I'd share it with you and again hope this helps and if any comments or anything let me know if there's something maybe you see that I did wrong or maybe I can improve on let, let me know because I'll, I'll document because I'm all about getting things good and documented for everyone to make every, everything easier so okay well this is Steve Cap 5 j Thanks again for watching 73